Welcome back everybody. This is Eric here with I Write Veteran 88. Today, I have a very special gun gripe for you. I am here in Colton, California at Draken Armory. Came all the way out to California to hang out here with Vince at Draken Armory. And we're gonna talk today up, a little bit about some of the crazy crap that goes on in California in terms of you know running a business, uh, you know, selling guns, buying guns, and some of the crazy laws that we have to contend with in California to uh, exercise our Second Amendment rights. And uh, dude, thanks for having me. I know yeah. it's after hours. It's a pleasure. Yeah, yeah but I appreciate you uh, closing down the shop so we can kind of have a chat here. And um, beautiful state, by the way. Oh yeah, thanks. Yeah, not beautiful gun laws. Though. The state's beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The state's the geography. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But not the gun laws. No, yeah, the gun no, laws they, are yeah. very restrictive. Yes, yeah. extremely restrictive. Yeah. Yeah. And it's crazy too because when you, you know, like, you know, I recently we went out to Joshua Tree uh, National Park, you know, and it's just it's beautiful out there and all the scenery is great. I mean, you look at the sky, it looks like an artist painted it every yep. single day. It's like, it's so beautiful. Well, what, what gives, right? Like what in the world? And, and California has always had these just crazy draconian gun laws. And we have discussed this until our face is blue in terms of all the videos that we made on the channel talking about how jacked up California's laws are. So it's real nice to have, you know, literally be on the ground, on the front lines to kind of talk about this. And we see some of these kind of odd features and there's this roster, yep. right? So roster, maybe it's, it's probably good to, to start at the source, right? So as a gun business, as an FFL in California, what are some of the unique challenges that you have on your doorstep in terms of running a gun shop in California? Anything unique? Well. Just starting off, just to, to even find a place to sell a gun shop, a lot of landlords or places don't even want to lease the spot out to you because they know you're selling guns and they're anti-gun. So for us, uh, we originally had another location set and we had been in the, in the location for over two years and then we actually got our FFL and by the time we got our FFL, the landlord changed their mind and said, oh, we don't want you selling guns anymore. So you know that once you get your FFL, you have a window of like 90 days to, to provide a, a permanent address. So we were racing around to find a uh, location that would, that would allow us to. And luckily, uh, fortunately, our landlord next door, she's a doctor, um, she's a chiropractor. She said, yeah, sure, come on in. But we were in a race. Yeah, so that's the first thing, right? So just dealing with the location to find. Um, there's another city right now that uh, I think it's Culver City where the city is buying out the gun store and you know without the rumors or whatever you think it is the rumors are is that the city's buying it out so that no one can buy the shop and and keep it they're going to shut the gun store down so just the culture out here mm -hmm. is generally anti-gun well it does seem like the overwhelming consensus overall is that most of your you know city council members your local law enforcement you know state law enforcement every everywhere from city jurisdiction all the way up to state is that all the way, like they're generally just very anti-gun and that seems to be pretty true. Anti-gun and anti-heart on crime. Right? Yeah. So there's a no bail policy out right now. There's like, it's almost like a, a catch and release, like fishing, right? Yeah. There, every, there's felonies happening, yeah. right? Law enforcement arrest them, send them into the jail, they're out the same night. So, but um, yet, if you get pulled over by the police in California oh, and they find out you have a gun in the car, they're probably going to put you through the ringer and yeah. they're going to be very scrutinizing about the fact that you have a gun on you. You'll get charged probably with a felony. Uh, you'll lose your ability to even buy, which is a certificate of eligibility. Oh, you'll gosh. lose your uh, eligibility to even buy and own a firearm. Okay. Right. So, so it's difficult to run the shop. All right. Now, what about the consumer who wants to come in and buy a gun? Do they have to have anything special above and beyond a normal FFL? You need or a normal normal gun buyer in another state? Yeah, sure. If you don't have the if you have the federal limit supply ID, if you don't have the uh, the new one, um, you're going to have to have two forms of ID. Right. Um, on top of that, you need to do something like a car registration to prove your residence or a utility bill. Mm -hmm. um, you also need uh, what's called FSE firearm safety card. Okay. And then, and then you're eligible to run drugs, which is dealer record of sale. It's a little different from NICS. So NICS is like what they use everywhere else. We use Dros, and uh, that's a 10-day waiting period after that as well. Ah, oh, so that's right. So, so California has mandatory 10-day waiting period. Yep. That's frustrating. I mean, what if a person, for instance, let's say a lady is being abused by her husband or something like that, or by a boyfriend or something, and there's some need, there's some extraordinary need that they have to defend themselves 
in the short term, right? So what, yep. you're gonna have to wait 10 days and then yep. you know that husband's gonna come and do something crazy or a boyfriend well, do something crazy. Restraining orders. Or yeah, some, some person has ha had their business victimized, right? It's, Someone broke in and, and did a bunch of damage, held them at gunpoint, robbed them. They're afraid, they're like, holy crap, I wanna be able to protect my business, I wanna get a gun. They come in, they buy the gun, and then all the paperwork is done and you say, well, sorry, you got a 10 day waiting period to contend with. I mean. That's got to be frustrating to someone who needs to be armed soon. That actually happens where there's cases and they don't they don't publicize them a lot, but where someone needs a gun because they have a restraining order um, and they're on a 10 day waiting period or they couldn't do the background because they didn't have the necessary documents that they needed. Mm -hmm. For example, if you rent and you don't and you don't and you drive your parents car or whatever and you rent. So you have no residence or proof of residency and you don't have registration to prove that you live somewhere. You can't even come in and buy a gun. And like then that. on top of that, to make it even worse, the freaking cops are, are easy on crime. Yeah. So if someone did break into a business or something, they're going to get a slap on the wrist. Yeah, well, it's not the cops. It's the judicial system. Right. The cops will go in, and then it, it kind of uh, unmotivates the law enforcement to do their job, right? Because they're like, this guy's going to just get released the same evening. But we've had some people come in, and that's happened. Like I said, it's been pub it hasn't been publicized, but where people were waiting to get a firearm, and they've been attacked and murdered. and. Mm -hmm. you know, in that waiting period or a restraining order and stuff like that. So that happens here in California a lot. Wow. They just don't publicize it. Well, lot. generally when it comes to gun laws in America, California is sort of the, let's just say the litmus test in which the feds want to be able to enact federal gun control. And that's why when you see all these crazy assault weapons bans and universal background checks and mandatory waiting periods and all these kind of crazy things that you look at at a, at a bird's eye level and go, wow, like this is crazy for us to have to live like this. They always use California as like that model for what they want the federal side of it to be like. So California is a unique glimpse into a dystopian future that they want for the, the federal side, which would be you know nationwide or whatever. So it's hard to run a shop. It's difficult for the consumer to come in and purchase a gun, makes it much more difficult. I would imagine that has an effect on business. Oh yeah, for sure. You probably we don't have, do as much we business. We have to turn away some customers and say, hey, come back when you need, when you have the proper documents. Or Damn, whatever. Because, yeah. That's frustrating. Not only that, the tax is going up. Mm. So, you know, right now the economy is really bad. So customers come in and they can only buy like one box of 20 rounds of AR just because they want to go shoot, but mm -hmm. they can't afford that much. Um, there's an 11% tax starting next year, you know, thanks to Newsom. Right? Mm -hmm. And so everyone's trying to buy what they can now, but um, just the prices on everything. Uh, a, a 320 uh, or M18 is $100 more here in California versus the basic stock 320 in any other state. Wow. So just by the time it gets to us, it's already $100 more. Mm. Right? And people are like, hey, why is it so much? Are the dealers, I mean, are the, are the FFLs charging us that? I'm like, and I tell people, I'm like, we're getting it at that price. So I noticed that everything out here is more expensive. So, so, so I've been out here visiting, you know, went to fill up fuel in the Jeep and it's like gas is $4.75 a gallon versus, you know, where I'm at in Georgia, a gallon of fuel is like three bucks. Yeah. So you got, you got federal, you always have federal tax on gas, right? But the state tax is, is the 30 something cents. So you're looking at 50 cents on tax a gallon. Not only that, California, uh, charges more for the gas that they bring in from California from the states. I mean, sorry, from the gasoline companies because they require to put more additives. So it automatically costs more mm -hmm. plus the taxes. So then you're looking at a dollar more than most states. Yeah, it's just torture. Yeah. Everything here is more expensive. Yeah. I noticed this is crazy for so, good, for good scenery as yeah, exactly. You're paying for that, that beautiful scenery. Yeah. Um, so you've got all of these things that also kind of compound upon each other, but then we get down to the actual guns themselves, which are incredibly restricted as well. You've yep. got a handgun roster. Let's talk about the handgun roster just okay. at, at a bird's eye level. We don't have to go into a ton of detail, but you know, there are obviously several restrictions on the type of guns that you can own in California and the configurations that they have to be in. Like, of course we see this AR with this crazy thing is it can't have a pistol grip, right? right. So, so yeah, a, a, according to the, the the regulations or the law is that your thumb cannot fully grip around and be in line with your trigger finger. So they've created the fin, or you can do what they call the juggernaut or juggernaut, the company juggernaut tactical. They make it so where you have to, you have to slap the, the pin on an AR to break the action a little bit to where you can drop the magazine and reload it. Um, they just do a bunch of things that are just, it doesn't serve any really purpose. It's actually more dangerous because I can't grip this gun all the way. Right, so if I grip this and I want to maneuver with it, it's actually more dangerous for the end user, the actual end user, to use it. They they have a propensity to probably drop it 
Mm -hmm. right? Because it's also just... easier for someone to snatch this gun from you if you can't have yeah. a good, good, good hold on. Yeah, you don't have a solid purchase. That's right. So if you don't have a solid purchase on, how is that safer? You know, it's definitely not safer. And I think that what a lot of this stuff comes to, you know, down to as well is our government. They don't want the, the citizens of this country to be on equal level, force to force. Uh, on the same level as them. You know, they always want to have, you know, a, a, what they feel is a foothold on the citizenry. They want to feel like, because they're way outnumbered, right? Like if you look at even the military, like there's more gun owners in the U.S. than the entire military combined, like by a huge margin. Like the civilian gun owners in this country have the military and police outnumbered by a huge margin. So, oh, yeah. you know, they don't want the citizenry to be able to stand toe to toe against them. And that at a bird's eye level, that's really what this all comes back down to. OK, you know, all these strict gun gun laws and all this gun control is not about public safety. You ain't got a hill of beans to do with public safety. They don't give it rats out ass about anybody but themselves I think, they're worried about themselves i think they're using the military's philosophy of overmatch yeah so they want to have overmatch on, on the population 110 percent yeah. because because as soon as look at what they what the people can do without guns like right all the protests and stuff mm -hmm. they were able to and what baltimore they were able to take out take over police stations right and that's without firearms yeah the baltimore police had to abandon their their yeah. uh because they're not going to shoot on innocent, innocent citizens, right? Sure. So look at, look at what the people of the population can do without firearms. Well, you know, the, the so. Russians were rolling in trying to take Kiev in the early part of the war in Ukraine. Yep. And what were they doing? They had grandmas out in the streets making Molotov cocktails. They were handing out Kalashnikovs out of trucks, giving yep. them to whoever could carry a gun. They, they had a defensive posture that they, that they were able to, to amass in a very quick manner uh, to fight the Russians off, right? right? So, you know, that just goes to show that whenever... It's their butt on the line. Yeah. They're always going to be like, oh, hand out guns as quick as possible. Like, if they think their life's in danger, I mean, look, self-preservation will do that. Even the government, who they might, at a bird's eye level, really hate us, right? But you better believe that if they, if they think that their lives are in danger, well, they're going to start handing out guns. Well, if they know that the, the, the possibility that the, oh, the actual country can be overrun and the government will see, cease to exist and we will not have any country... If we're overrun, then of course they're going to hand out guns, right? That's right. Yeah, because they. What else are they going to do? All right. I notice on this uh, AK, there's this little bolt back here. I'm assuming this is pinned. That is a rounds. rivet. Yep, that's a rivet. Um, let me see if I can get this out. On there we go. Okay. Um, it's a rivet, and it's riveted to ten rounds. So we do have a t capacity limit here as well, which is ten round max. Um, that's for handguns and um, and, and rifles. Right. right. So that's a ten round oh, PMAC or an AK. That's a ten round. Uh, mag for an AR. Yeah. So these look like thirty round mags, but they're pinned to ten rounds. Yeah, because people want to have the aesthetic of a of a full mag or or a, a max or not high cap, but regular capacity magazine. Okay. So they want to have that look. It, it looks weird with like a ten round a rifle. Looks weird with a ten round mag, right? Especially an AK. Yeah, yeah. AR is AKs, right? So yeah. people want that look. So we provide that service. We rivet them. Perfect for them. Yeah. Well, so you've got a ten round magazine capacity. You can't yep. have the vertical pistol grip that you can get your your entire, you know, hand around. Right. Uh, what are the? I I heard some stuff about bullet buttons and things. Is that a thing anymore? So the bullet button is not a thing anymore. You have to have either a fixed mag or the fin, right? Oh, so okay. if you want to have the features, like some people are like, hey, I want my forward grip, right, and whatever other. Uh, I want to be able to move. So if you if you notice, these are these butt stocks are, are fixed, right? So they, they you can stop, you can fix them in place. You put them where you want it, and then you fix it in place. So if you want to have a collapsible butt stock and a forward pistol grip or whatever on your on the, your rail, then you have to have the mag lock, right? So that you have to break the action or something or or feed it from a different re, a different way. Sometimes they have the, the the port where you can put the rounds in there. I've seen those like stripper clip things where you can like load stripper yeah, clips in there. Yeah, you just ram them in there and they just okay. So you can do that or you just go fin if you want the full functionality. Most people opt for the detachable mags for yeah. obvious reasons. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, wow. functionality, right? You so when we look at the um, at the Clinton ban, right? You know, we had the initial Clinton ban, and there was a federal ban on you know all types of you know these types of rifles, right? Such as features and magazine restrictions. You couldn't have a threaded barrel. There was all these things, right? And we had all these compliant you know ban era in the '90s. You know, these ban era uh, rifles that had to be set up a certain way. Well, then the ban sunsetted in ten years. Right, they end up finding out um, after crunching a whole bunch of data that 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 crime was not negatively or positively affected. It was it was a very neutral effect on any type of visible crime in terms of the data. Um, what seems to be the data here in terms of, you know, 
let's just say criminals using firearms in the, in the commission of a crime, is there any difference in the in the in the criminal activity? I or? mean, criminals are going to get guns no matter what, right? right. And they're not going to if, if let's say they buy one here. Well, the majority of criminals they get their guns by getting stolen with firearms. Right. That's or they'll just go over state lines and buy them somehow. Yeah, but they don't even need to do that. They just break into houses. So statistics show that most guns used in crimes are stolen guns. Yeah. Right. So uh, a lot of times they can they can build a lower, they can build a pistol, AR pistol. They like to run around with the AR pistols because it's a shorter barrel and shorter stock. Um, you think they're putting a fin on their guns? No, they're not, and they're not locking their mags. And they're putting thirty round mags. They're putting thirty matter. rounds. So we're at, so every citizen is essentially outgunned immediately. So if you're if you're abiding by the law, you're outgunned and you're overmatched immediately, right? So now, what about the um? Let's just say the overall ethos, because like in Georgia where I'm at, I mean, if you get pulled over with a gun, the cops are probably going to be like, "Hey, what kind of gun is that? Oh, I got my sig." You know, like they want to talk guns, they want to talk shop. Like when we walk in a gun shop, what do we do? We start talking about guns, right? Because you sell guns and people come in here, they know guns, so you're, you're going to talk shop. Most of the cops talk shop in places like Georgia or other, like Florida, for instance. Now, out here, I have a feeling that the cops don't talk shop. They're probably going to be like very scrutinizing, very, you know, inquisitive about why you need to own a gun. So does it seem that the law enforcement out here, that the overall um, idea is that they're kind of, you know, jerks? Uh, well, you got to remember, m most cops aren't gun people. Right in in California, for example, it, maybe it's in a, in a different state. So they're carrying a gun because it's part of their job. Um, a lot of times they come in here and they don't know the ins and outs, the red dots, and and all this stuff. Sometimes sometimes I've seen law enforcement officers that haven't cleaned their gun in years. Mm -hmm. Right. So a lot of them in California are not necessarily gun people. Um, the laws, because we have uh, new CCW laws and they're approving them more, the culture is starting to change. Mm -hmm. because they know that a lot more people have their CCWs. But in, for the most part, they're not used to seeing guns everywhere. And a lot of them tend to panic or, or um, escalate things if they do see a gun. Especially, you know, escalating things unnecessarily. Yes. I mean, like, one thing that a lot of law enforcement officers are taught is always to employ their verbal judo, right? Like, if you can talk your way out of a situation, you most certainly should. And that doesn't matter if you're a cop or a civilian, right? If, if you don't have to escalate the situation, why escalate it? Right. And it seems like those de-escalation tactics are something that in some parts of the country, police seem to have a really good grasp of. But in others, it's like, and it may just be by virtue of the fact that California is an extremely blue state. Right. Very anti-gun state. Many of the citizens are anti-gun. And one thing I noticed about California in the time I've been here is that a lot of people seem to have this Karen complex. Like, you know, they want to call the police. They want to tell on someone. If they see someone with a gun. Remember when Hillary Clinton was always telling everybody, if you see something, you need to say something. Yeah. When it had to do with a gun. Like, yeah. she literally was telling people, you need to, if you see something, you need to say something. But here, they take that to a completely different level. If they saw you walking down the street with a gun, they're not just going to say something. They're going to call the police and be like, they got a gun. It's going to be a chicken little complex. The sky yeah. is falling. This is a completely different culture yeah, of different what gun culture. ownership is. But in terms of defending yourself with a gun in California, yeah. now that is that pretty standard? Like it's, I mean, like if you need to use a firearm to protect yourself in the state of California, you're probably going to be under a high degree of scrutiny. You're, you're already you're already considered a criminal at that point, right? Because if right. you defended yourself, technically you shot somebody, right? Which right. is which is a crime. You know, technically, right? So you're going to have to be proven innocent, you know, right. uh, like any other like any other crime. So you already committed a crime when you defended yourself, and that's the way they look at it, right? And based on the evidence or or, or the judicial system later on, but yeah, it, you're going to be highly scrutinized because mm -hmm. because number one, the, the majority don't want us carrying guns anyways, it, whether right. they think we're irresponsible or they think it's going to cause more crime, but it hasn't. Right. It's only it's only helped us defend in crime. Right. So mm -hmm. if you've seen some of the videos now, a lot of videos, a lot of CCW holders are actually defending their lives recently now and where they would have just been victims of crime. So defensive yeah. shootings are up. Yeah. Defensive shootings are. Well, let's take a moment. That's a great way to segue into the handgun roster. So we talked about rifles and the features and things like that. Give us a, a brief overview of how this handgun roster works. Because I know, like, recently the, the SIG P365 just got added to the handgun roster. And it's a ridiculously popular gun yeah. anyway, yeah. but they just added that yeah. to the roster. So, apparently, if the gun's not on the roster, you can't own it in California. Um, yeah, so, so there's a couple of loopholes, right? Um, but the guns that were already on the roster have been grandfathered in, right, for 
for example, the Glock 19. Okay, it's been on the roster forever, um, and they have to be made in the same factory and the same specifications to remain on the roster. Now, the new guns that are on the roster is because the micro stamping, California realized that that technology is not there yet, right? So they said they delayed it till I forgot, 2025 or 26 or something weird like that. And now the, the, the guns only have to match two things, which is the magazine disconnect and the loaded chamber indicator. So your new company, your companies are, or your distributors or manufacturers are now making them with the loaded chamber indicator and the magazine disconnect and then getting them tested to be on the roster. And that's how those new guns are showing up on the roster. I see. Yeah. So part of the, the, the specifications for how a gun winds up on the roster, I'm assuming it has to have like manual safety, yep. loaded chamber indicator, you've mentioned. Well, not necessarily manual safety, but loaded chamber indicator and magazine disconnect. Magazine, a magazine disconnect. Right. And then you know, I noticed earlier magazine. you were putting the, uh, the Wilson combat frame on yep. one of the six there. This guy right here. Yeah, let's check this out. Yeah. So, yep. clear. Very cool. Yep. I'm a real big fan of this grip module, by the way. I noticed you put it on. I, I, I run I run these on all of my SIGs. I got one of the M18 and the M17. And uh, so with the magazine disconnect safety, for those of you that don't know, it means that when the magazine is out of the gun, you can't squeeze the trigger. Yep. Right. So the magazine has to be inserted in the pistol for you to be able to squeeze the trigger. So, of course, you also have to sweep the safety off to accomplish that as well. And for those of you that may not know, guns like the M18, M17, Glock 19, you name it, a bunch of guns do not have factory magazine disconnect safeties as right. part of the standard. Most design. modern guns don't. Most modern guns don't. One gun that comes to mind is like, you know, Browning High Powers usually, uh, you know, have uh, a magazine disconnect safety, which I, I'm not a big fan of. Some Berettas have a factory magazine disconnect safety, uh, like the Cheetahs and Bobcats and some of those. Uh, the BDAs. I, I've never really been a fan of that because I feel like it adds unnecessary additional components to the gun. More parts to break. That more, more to break, more to go wrong. And also, what if What's your magazine jettisons out of the gun? Uh, let's just say, for whatever reason, you lose your mag and you got a round in the chamber. Well, I at least want that one round to work. Yep. So from a tactical standpoint, uh, tactics, Defensive. a magazine disconnect safety is a liability. Yep. Right. I, I don't know what the purpose it serves. I, I mean, if you could tell me what purpose it serves these, these days, because the other trigger safeties, you know, there's like four different safeties, internal safeties on guns now these days. Um, what's the purpose of a magazine disconnect? Maybe um, the way the lawmakers look at it in the state of California in terms of the handgun roster is maybe they feel like, well, if we require all of these guns to have magazine disconnect safeties and it requires um, all of the companies to have to engineer some solution, yep. maybe it will discourage them from uh, even trying to bother to come up with a solution to get their gun on the handgun roster. I, because I think like, about it, like, yeah. that's not an easy thing. Like, if the gun's not designed to have magazine disconnect safety, they're going to have to engineer some solution. And that's a huge pain in the butt. Like, nobody wants to try to do that. I feel like the way things are swaying with the gun laws, and now they're going a little bit more pro 2A mm -hmm. in general, federally, and across the country, I think they know that, and they're trying to hit everybody financially. Right, so if I can if I can make you pay an eleventh percent tax on it, and what they're also doing now is that has to be done by January first. Is uh, they they created a bill where we have to have a year's worth of surveillance playback. So now I have to buy a new DVR, and they're requiring other shops that don't have existing cameras a full camera system with audio and one year's playback, and that could cost up to five to ten thousand. So any mom and pop shop, right, yeah. that can't afford that. They're, what are they going to do? They're breaking the law. They're going to take away their, their FFL or their COE mm -hmm. or their gross or capabilities, and you're just shutting them down financially, right? Damn. And if I you mean, can't pay the 11% taxes. You're talking hundreds of terabytes of data. Yep. Like when you're talking audio and video for 24 hours a day, seven yep. days a week, for them to have access to, that is, that is a lot of data. And, and it's got to be a specific frames per second. Mm -hmm. So it's going to take up a ton of memory. Yeah, I mean, so you're you're talking like you said, you know, ten grand worth of of, of your own personal servers and raid towers, whatever, to be able to keep up with all that data yep. and manage that data and keep that data safe. Yep. You know, it, we actually are suing the ATF right now. So our our company Argos, you know, we're heading up this battle to help with these FFL revocations. So we're suing the ATF right now at, with under our um, our um, you know FFL coalition. Okay. And right now, revocations are up over 300%. The ATF is literally going after gun company or gun FFL holders over stupid little paperwork issues. Yeah. Like literally, you forgot to, you know, cross a T or dot an I, or you made some little minor paperwork mistake. This is not a big deal. 
you know, we all make mistakes. Like, I mean, look, go to the DMV yeah. and pull a bunch of paperwork or go, go to the FBI or the CIA or the alphabet agencies and pull their damn paperwork and see how many freaking issues they have on their paperwork. I guarantee you it's going to be a ton of issues, yeah. Yeah. right? But then, oh, if you, an FFL holder, make even the tiniest little issue, oh, you literally forgot to cross a T or dot an I, just that stupid. They could literally revoke your FFL over the, the stupidest little issue. And revocations are up over 300%, yeah. and we're suing the ATF for it. Yeah, well, they used to be correctable violations, right? Right. And now they're taking away FFLs for it. Right. So it, it, it takes me that, you know, when I'm in California here and discussing the California laws and just the general disposition uh, of the politicians out here in California, it would seem that, you know, they're trying to make the accusation be the punishment. Yep. Right, you know, by simply coming up with all these draconian measures that you have to go through, and every little loophole that you have to ju have to jump through, the idea is that they're going to discourage not only the the gun sellers from wanting to sell guns, but also someone from wanting to purchase a gun as well. They're they're literally interfering with commerce, yep. because the laws are so strict and draconian, and that's why uh, all these anti gunners want. Uh, the federal laws to mirror the, the, the laws in California so closely because they see how effective those measures actually are in the big scheme of things. So, you know, it's, look, y'all are on the front lines of this. I yeah. mean, being a, a gun dealer in California is not easy, and being a gun owner in California is not easy. I've got a lot of friends that live out here, and they have to deal with a bunch of stupid crap. You know, even buying reloading components. A buddy of mine likes to make his own pistol ammo. And at one point, you know, he was telling me, dude, the components out here are freaking crazy. You, you can't even buy 100 primers for less than, you know, 15 or 20 bucks for a sleeve of 100. Whereby I remember at one point I was buying primers for like $1.99 a sleeve. And I, I must have loaded up on like 100,000 primers. Yeah. But like, it's just weird to think from a reloading standpoint, even reloading components are not easy to get. We have some... Uh, ammunition distributors and dealers that will not send to California. And we have some firearm distributors that will just not send to California. They don't want to modify it to put a fin on it or they don't want to modify it. So luckily we have our 07, so we can take it in and we can modify it to be California legal, mm -hmm. right? But if, if not, most, and but they don't care. Most of them just don't, won't sell ammunition. They're like, we're not sending ammunition to you. Just because just you're in California. So, yeah. you know. and, and, and it sucks that, you know, the, the folks have to get essentially punished for the actions of the government. I mean, I've seen a lot of people say, well, I'm going to put my foot down and I'm not going to do business with California, right, because of the draconian laws. Like an FFL that says, well, we won't transfer a gun to another FFL in California because we don't have to go through all the extra paperwork or whatever. But I feel like that's also that's doing a, a disservice to the people that live in California who, who need to have access to guns all that much more than the rest of us, right? There's a huge population here. Yep. You guys are servicing a huge population of people who let's hope they eventually see the light and, and, and know that they need to be a gun owner. Yep. And, uh, and that makes it all that much more difficult when our own people don't want to really support the folks in California who they view as many times view as a lost cause. Yeah, yeah. well, during the riots, right, and during COVID, man, Gun, gun sales went up. They were already up. California has really high gun sales compared to the rest of the, the nation. Um, but they went up super high because people started realizing that all it takes is one home invasion, right? Yeah. Or one thing to cre create anarchy, right? We're always 72 hours away from anarchy. That's right. Right? And California started realizing that. So at the minimum, they'd come in and start buying handguns. That's right. right? And shout out to all the distributors. Well, not distributors, but manufacturers that are putting their guns on the roster, right? And going through the work. So say... Say uh, Springfield, uh, Smith and Wesson, right now whether it's to make more sales, but also giving us the guns. Well, it's a it's a win win, right? So shout out to those guys too. Yeah, I mean Smith and Wesson had their first billion dollar year recently, so they're doing really well as a company. So obviously, yeah, there's a fiscal reason for them to want to you know make more money and open up every market they possibly can, and they have the money to you know add those guns to the roster. But I do want to think that at, at an overall level that they do care about arming the citizens here as well and that and that that's more important than the right, profit right. we'd like to think that that's the reason they're doing it right? yeah of course yeah. of course i mean there's always going to be the the monetary reasons yeah. and, and those sort of motivations but you know let's just hope that that things do better but let's not hope let's let's be the change right you know we, we have to continuously fight these freaking pricks because you know, you give them an inch, they're going to take a mile. And, you know, you can't always sit there and say that California is a lost cause, just like you can't say that Colorado is a lost cause. I mean, look, Colorado has some really crappy gun laws. And uh, I'm probably going to do a very similar video to this one uh, about Colorado's gun laws. But Colorado is full of a bunch of raging leftists that hate guns and a bunch of anti-gunners. And, yep. you know, 
But to say, is Colorado a lost cause? Well, well no, it's not. No place is a lost cause because we all have to you know, view the, the overall struggle of the Second Amendment as being our, our unique struggle that belongs to all of us as a community. So, you know, I really hope that people, you know, learn something from this particular gun gripe uh, about how jacked up California is. And, and it's a battleground. And, you know, they are behind, the, they're behind enemy lines, not just on the front line, they're behind enemy lines here. Yeah. Because, you know, things have been getting really, I mean, look, Newsom is just running this place into the ground. And, you know, there's already some rumors that, you know, he might be a potential presidential run in 2024. That's the rumor mill, but who knows? Well, don't forget, Newsom tried to create a new amendment to the gun laws and try to, you know, outlaw more guns than already are out. So it's almost, it's essentially another assault weapons ban, but he tried to create it as an amendment. Right. So he's trying to change the amendments, yep. you know, of the country. So, I mean, Who's, sure. what, that's a dictatorship at that point. Oh, one hundred percent. Well, we know now that Bruin does change the landscape considerably. You know, that's one one saving grace that we do have. You know, right now the the Bruin uh, Supreme Court decision it really does give us a lot of, of good ammunition to go after a lot of these things with. And I hope that in time, you know, we're already see, we're already seeing some like the Fifth Circuit is really laying some doozies down right now. You know, the bump stock uh, case is getting thrown out. Michael Cargill is doing a really great job on that front. Okay, that's doing well. FPC, GOA, Second Amendment Foundation doing great work on that front. Um, you know, of course, the brace, uh, we got a nationwide brace injunction now, which that's awesome, right? So braces are back on the menu, not for California, of course, because yeah, you can't have pist AR pistols, right. which is lame, extremely lame, uh, incredibly lame. Um, however, you know, we are getting some doozies handed down in the courts. And I think that they're starting to see, you know, that they're getting the, the smackdown put on them. And I think overall, what we're gonna wind up seeing, it might take some time, but I think that things will reverse course in California even, believe it or not, it will. Uh, because Bruin does uh, set forth a very distinctive and difficult standard for the uh, federal government to overcome. So I think they're, they're gonna have a very difficult time uh, justifying these gun laws that are in place. Yep, and then after that, for California, for fellows and, and gun owners and the public, it's just gonna be a financial battle at that point. Of course. Yeah. And look, when you're dealing with the government, they have unlimited funds. I mean, they print money. They own the freaking machines that print the money. They don't give a crap. You think you're going to outspend the ATF? You're not going to outspend the ATF. They're the government. They can, they can just, they'll throw unlimited funds at the situation. Their, well, their whole point is to try to bleed people dry in court. The irony is they're using our tax money to fight against us. Right. <laughs> using our very tax dollars to infringe right. on the rights that they're supposed to protect to infringe on the on the constitutionally protected rights that they swore an oath to protect. Yeah. And that that oath is not to the government, y'all. When you swear that oath, that, that oath is to is to the people. It's to the Constitution and the people it represents. Like, you know, the people are the government. We are the government. They are our employees. They serve us. Yeah. They work for us. They are our employees. And we're allowing these people to absolutely walk all over us. So I hope that Bruin does set forth a good precedence moving forward. I, th I think it's gonna work out well in the long term. I think the prognosis is quite good. I think right now we're on 28 or 29 states that are constitutional carry now. Yep. That's good. You know, Georgia recently just became part of that group. Uh, I think we got constitutional carry last year. Kemp signed that pretty readily and our state legislature was pretty quick to you know, jump right on that. Who knows? I think a lot of people are starting to wake up and the culture is changing. They are. So they I'm, are. I'm optimistic. That's right. You know, politics and laws and all these things are always downstream from culture. And if you change the culture of gun ownership, you change the way people look at guns, then the laws are obviously going to have to walk in step uh, with that concept. So, Vince, thanks so much yeah, dude, for having it, me. Man. Yeah, I know Thank we you. stayed late tonight. Y'all have already been at work all day and I appreciate yeah, no you worries. taking time to, you know, close up the shop and, and let's have a chat about, you know, some of the stuff going on in California. And uh, guys, I hope y'all enjoyed today's video. Many more on the way. I'm going to try to do more field trips and stuff and see how this, how this goes and go out to some different places and kind of just really talk to folks in, in all different sorts of places around America and get an idea of what everybody's going through. And I think it just helps bring home, you know, I can sit here and talk about California gun laws. I can pull a big rap sheet, but it's another thing when you hear it from the horse's mouth himself. So uh, ch uh, check out Drake and Armory. Great people here. Uh, do y'all have social media handles? Where can people yeah, follow Drake you? Drake and Armory Colton. That's on Instagram. Okay. Um, and mainly Instagram. Okay. Are you on Twitter? No, we are not on Twitter. Y'all got to get a Twitter page. Really? Okay. Look, Twitter, I'm telling you, Twitter is I know social media happening. platforms hate us. Yeah. You know, they hate us, especially in California. Yeah. They hate gun owners and guns mm -hmm. in, in general. 
So, um, but yeah, we, we should probably hit up Twitter. If, yeah. If, yeah. F follow them on the gram y'all, but also y'all get a Twitter page. I'm telling you, yeah, Twitter, sure. Twitter is blowing up right now. It's going really well. And, uh, they are ve being very fair, uh, to conservatives. So, you know, if you do run a gun company yourself or run any type of business where you want to get extra exposure, I would highly recommend, uh, building a Twitter page, uh, for you, uh, your business as well, but definitely check these guys out on Instagram and Vince, thanks so much again. Appreciate it, man. Thanks right. for coming in. Yep. Thanks Many guys. more videos on the way. We'll see you soon.